हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग टुडेज टॉपिक इज डेटा फ्लो डायग्राम आई एम योर इंस्ट्रक्टर मिस श्रुति रावल सो लेट अस स्टडी व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय डेटा फ्लो डायग्राम नाउ डेटा फ्लो डायग्राम इज अ ग्राफिकल डिपिक्शन ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ डेटा थ्रू इंटेंडेड सॉफ्टवेयर सिस्टम एंड इट इज यूज एज द फर्स्ट स्टेप टू क्रिएट एन ओवरव्यू ऑफ द सिस्टम इट इज वेरी यूजफुल एज इट प्रोवाइड्स एन ओवरव्यू ऑफ डेटा एज वेल एज अ फंक्शनैलिटी टू सॉफ्टवेयर डिजाइनर्स ओके now let us study what are the different components with or entities or you can say symbols associated with data flow diagram the first symbol is external entity now external entity can be any person it can be another software it can be a hardware which provides or consumes information from the intended software okay now let us see what do you mean by another person as an extent external entity for example if you are uh, using facebook right so you as a facebook user write down the information that is login information right so you are uh, entering some data into the system so you are an external entity in data flow diagram so external entity is someone who enters the data inside the system that is it can be a person for example uh it can also be in another software for example if i don't to, uh, if there is some application if i want to want to not create my own login information and if i log in from uh, facebook or gmail right so who is actually entering the data for you yes the uh, the another software that is your facebook or gmail is entering data on your behalf so that another uh you can say application or software is acting as an external entity for your system also if you have different sensors for example if you have smoke detector or you have motion detector that is also detecting some information and giving the data of that information to the system right so hardware can also act as an external entity to your system whatever system you are developing you have to identify what are the external entities associated with your particular system now data flow diagram is a diagram which has many rules and there are rules for every components which are associated with dfd what are the rules associated with external entity let us see the first rule is uh, it is represented by a rectangle that is not a rule that is a basic symbol the rule is it must be named you cannot have an external entity which is unnamed also there is no direct flow between external entity to external entity there has to be a process so you cannot say that i have given data that is as a facebook user i am giving data to some another facebook user without any intervention of the system you cannot directly hand over the data from one person to another there has to be a system right so uh external entities cannot communicate with each other without any process that is not possible in dfd right so this is a symbol for external entity a rectangle and inside you write the external entity's name the next entity a or component of dfd is a process now process is uh, depicted by a circle or you can say a bubble it represents the process or you can say the function that transforms the data which it has as an input and it gives uh, that data manipulated data to some external entity right so it is getting some data it is changing that data in some way and it is uh, having the output of that data to be given for some other external entity right what are the basic rules associated with a process it must be properly labeled again and it must uh, not be repeated in a diagram so in every dfd if you have a process that should be only one process of that particular name you cannot by any means repeat that process right even though you feel that it is a cluttered diagram you may repeat external entities but you you don't have to repeat because it is a rule you do not repeat the process uh, many times in a dfd so this is uh, the symbol right so here is a circle inside you write the process name that is nothing but that is one of the function that is performed by your system the next component of dfd is the data flow right because the name is data flow diagram so data data must flow 
from where is data flowing from external entity to process from process to external entity right and the data flow is depicted just by an arrow symbol okay and uh, that arrow should also be named now what are the basic rules for data flow diagram data flow cannot be bidirectional you cannot show uh, an arrow with two arrow heads right uh the input data flow and output data flow for a process should always be different also uh, the data flow should always be labeled the labeled sh labels should be precise and informative you do not have to write uh, lots of information on this arrow it should be informative it should depict what sort of data is being entered or being uh, taken by the external entity or process but that should be very precise and informative you can join and uh, you can have join and fork in this particular uh, data flow you can see this example that i have a process user login and there is an arrow coming towards user login so that is data is flowing towards this process right so login info it means username and password that is the information which is being entered into this process user login user login is a process which is manipulating that information and the login status is the data which is being uh, output from the process right so there is an input data flow and there is an output data flow so this was the component that is data flow and the last component for dfd is a data store now data store is uh, you can say they are place where data is stored it is similar to database and uh, that information may be stored either temporarily or permanently by the user and they are internal to the system we are not showing the external databases here we are only showing the internal databases the basic rule is it is never shown in the context level diagram right never show a data store in context level diagram and there is no direct data flow from uh, data store to data store as there is no direct flow from external entity to to external entity similarly you cannot flow the data from one data store to another data store there must be some process on which some uh, data manipulation is taking place right uh, and this is the symbol you have two parallel lines inside that you are writing the name of the data store right so this were the uh, symbols of uh, data flow diagram now let us study what are the basic rules of data flow diagram the first rule is data flow diagram is depicting only the data flow it does not have any internal logics like if condition loop like in flow chart right do not use any internal logic in data flow it is not allowed the next is in order to keep the diagram uncluttered you can repeat data store in external entities but you know that what you don't have to repeat exactly process cannot be repeated but yes external entities as well as uh, data store they can be repeated the next is no process can have only output data flow that is a miracle right so if you don't have any data which is being entered into the process how can that process manipulate on data and give the output there should be some input to which there is an output right so no process can have only output data flow and similarly no process can have only input data flow if you are entering the information into the process there needs to be an output because there need to be something which is done on the data and given to someone if if there is only input in the function and if the function is doing nothing for uh, getting it to someone what is the use of that data input that is like a black hole right we do not want a black hole process in our system so a process must contain minimum one input data flow and minimum one output data flow right now again this we have already uh, studied that data cannot be moved from one store to another without a process data cannot be moved from one external entity to another external entity without a process data stores can't be sync again data stores cannot have only data input right you cannot have a database in which you are uh, entering the data entering the data and you are not selecting that data why are you entering the data if you don't want to select right so there cannot be only input data store similarly if you don't have any data entered in the database can you take output from that data 
right database no there is no possibility that if you do not insert the data you can select from that database so again data store must also have an input as well as output right now let us study the first level of uh, data flow diagram or you can say level 0 of data flow diagram that is context diagram level 0 of data flow diagram is also known as context level diagram and in context level diagram the process is the system itself so we are not bifurcating all the different functionalities or functions uh, in our system in context level diagram instead of that the system as a whole uh, we are writing as a process right for example registration system so registration process is a process the next thing that we are doing in context level diagram is we are identifying the external entities for registration process there are three entities faculty students and register right so the first data is input from student external entity to process that is student is entering course information and other personal information into the process right so this is the only input that we are getting into our system from student as an external entity to uh, our registration process now registration process will perform all the manipulation all the functionalities inside it and give as an output the class list to faculty class list to registrar and uh, class schedule to students so process is having one input and it is giving three output right so this is the basic or you can say level zero dfd now let us study level one dfd in level one dfd the whole registration process now is divided into sub processes or the actual functionalities that takes place while in registration process so here i have numbered both the functions which uh, takes place in the registration process one that is enroll the students that is one of the function that is performed and second is compile and distribute the information of the students which are enrolled right so there are two process which i have identified in my level one it is not limited to two process it can be three process four process it can be uh, different based on the project which you are using right so these are only two process which i have identified for my particular system again you are identifying the external entities no new external entities can be introduced in level one all the external entities that you have in context diagram should be only the external entities in level one that is also a rule in data flow diagram so what were the external entities exactly registrar faculty and students these were the only three external entities i have written faculty two times because we can repeat the uh, external entities for keeping my diagram uncluttered so i have taken the advantage of that particular thing and i have written faculty two times now what happens you know that student was uh, entering the data into the process so that input in context diagram and output right that should match in level one so because student was entering something in level one also student has to enter something right so what is student entering exactly course and other information was entered by student directly in the process while here student is entering courses and other information to a sub -pro process that is enroll student process is a process that i have identified in the registration process and student is entering the information in that sub process sub process is basically doing some manipulation on that data and based on the data, data manipulation it is sending data from one process to another what data is being sent from enrolled student uh, process uh, the manipulation is taking place in which individual course registration information is extracted and it is being sent to this process that is compile and distribute info so now we have every student's individual course registration information uh, in this particular process now what is this uh, process doing it is giving the output we know that schedule is given class list is given right to faculty and register so uh, this was the level 1 dfd now let us study what do you mean by level 2 dfd if you want to further uh, you can say 
divide any of the processes in level 1 you can do that in level 2 that is either I can take first process enroll student and I can bifurcate that into different sub processes in level 2 or I can take level 2 as a sub process and bifurcate in level 2 the data flow diagram right so you can take any of the process from level 1 DFD and further subdivide into different process I have taken the first process that is enroll student and I have divided it into three different sub process the first is 1.1 is obtained student preferences what is the students preference for the co course the sec second is 1.2 that is I am checking the eligibility based on the student preferences and the third is enroll student in class so this is the third process which is being taken place so enroll student is one process which has now been bifurcated into three sub processes in level 2 diagram again there should be this maintenance of data input y and output in level 2 also you can skip the external entity in level 2 so you can skip altogether from where data is coming but you have to specify the actual processes so here i have written only data input course and other uh, information we know that this has been entered by the students but it is okay if you skip the external entity altogether uh, after that uh, that information entered in the first process what is happening this obtain students preferences is generating a list of preference and that list of preference data is being sent from 1.1 process to 1.2 that is for checking the availability now every student has different list of preferences for the course in which they has to enroll or want to enroll but it is a possibility that every student is not eligible for the course in which they want to enroll right so what will happen in second process the eligibility criteria is checked so that eligibility criteria is checked uh, via student record and course prerequisite data store so here you can see the database i have used for getting the information uh, in this process to check the eligibility after the eligibility is checked the eligible student list is uh, sent from this process to the last process that is enroll student and individual course registration info is sent to the other process that is second process that we have seen in the previous slide so in data flow diagram you can see that there is only the flowing of data from one process to another we have seen till level 2 because if you, you if you want you can uh, pick a process from level 2 and refine it in level 3 but it is not recommended level 0 level 1 and level 2 are the recommended dfd because level 3 will be a, a very complex dfd to understand right so level till level 2 it is recommended for your system and uh, this was all about data flow diagram and this was all about today's lecture. Thank you.